everyone, my name is Claudia and I'm guiding your visit of one of the undiscovered beauty of Genoa, Interiano Pallavicino Palace. It was the ancient noble Interiano family who, in the 60s of the 16th century, commissioned the building of this wonderful palace. The wholesome wealth of this family derived from the intense commercial relations with the Spanish court, first promoted and managed by Ludovico Interiano and later by his sons Paolo Battista and Niccolò. The latter was the ship owner of numerous galleys for Philip II of Spain. The magnificence of the building was such that already in 1576 it was included in a royal list and in 1622 Rubens decided to illustrate it in this book of modern palaces of Genoa. This palace underwent numerous changes of ownership, including the purchase in 1820 by Duke Pasqua Vivaldi, who began a series of restoration and decorative renovation. The ownership changed again in 1836, when Domenico I Pallavicino bought it. With the Pallavicino family as masters and owners of the palace until today, it began an intense work of restoration and decoration that we can still appreciate today in many rooms. In entering the marvelous atrium, the fresco decoration of the vault and walls immediately stand out also thanks to the contrast with the brilliant white of the marble statues and busts. Let us begin from the top. The frescoes in the vault are attributed to the family workshop of the Calvi, who were the great protagonists of the 16th century Genoese panorama, in particular the head of the family, uh, Pantaleo Calvi, and the Vededetto, one of his sons, worked here. The central panel depicts a biblical battle, which interpretation is, is controversial, probably the battle leading the defeat of King Saul against David, or maybe the struggle between the Sennacherib and Ezekiel. It is certain that it was a biblical episode because historically that was the period following the Council of Trent, which tried to reaffirm the Christian faith. Consequently, to adapt the decoration themes to that cultural mood, the owners of palaces chose biblical episodes setting aside pagan themes such as love between gods and mythological stories. By completing the vault decoration by the Calvi family with the addition of some 19th century restoring interventions, there are allegorical figures – fidelity, liberality, victory, peace, fame, religion, intellect and silence. The fresco ornamenting the walls are the 19th century works by two Ligurian artists, Paolo Boccardo and Giuseppe Leoncini. All the marble busts stand out. The female busts are by Salvatore Revelli, while the male busts by Santo Varni, who was famous for the monumental statue of the faith in the cemetery of Staglieno. Salvatore Revelli sculpted two statues of Helen and Paris as well, located in the niches. In the background, in a stenographic position, there is a marble neoclassical representation of Antinos by Niccolò Traverso, a great Genoese neoclassical sculpture. Antinos was the favorite of the Roman Emperor Adrian, who decided to deify him after his tragic death in the River Nile. Purtroppo fece una fine molto infelice poiché scivolò da una barca e morì nel fiume Nilo annegando. Adriano, sconvolto, decise quindi di deificarlo, quindi di renderlo una divinità. We are now in the first floor marvelous loggia, entirely decorated by the Calvi's workshop and devoted to the Israeli King David, who, thanks to his cunning, managed to defeat his enemies and become king of Israel. Particularly relevant is the episode celebrating the defeat of the giant Goliath, followed by the celebration of his triumph with the people of Jerusalem depicted in the second octagon. To complete the male representation, there are four allegorical figures representing the four cardinal virtues prudence, 
justice, temperance and fortress. Another protagonist of this room is a statue realized by Pietro Costa in 1874 known as Toddler with a Shirt, but whose real name probably was Toddler playing with the phone Herma. But what is an Herma? It is a statue head or torso placed above the pillar. Accessing the second floor loggia, it immediately stands out the wonder of the magnificent frescoes, always by the Calvis, illustrating the story of King Solomon, the ruler known for his wisdom, who managed to pacify and reunite the Israeli people. In the central octagons, the main stories are depicted, the meeting between the Queen of Saba and Solomon, and the so-called story of Solomon's is idolatry. To complete the decorative cycle, there are other episodes of the king and four allegoric figures, the sculpture, the eloquence, the astronomy and the painting. Although the latter allegorical figures and the Solomon idolatry episode are attributed to another Genoese artist, Giovanni Battista Carlone, undisputable protagonist of the 17th century, who fresco the Doge's Palace Chapel. This is the wonderful garden of the palace. Its main feature is that it extends vertically on the hill thanks to the terraces. The garden originally included only the lower part bordered by the beautiful Nymphaeum. The upper part was created after the suppression of the monastic orders in 1798 and the subsequent demolition of the convent of Santa Caterina da Luppoli so that the land was acquired to enlarge the garden. Since 1971, on the top of the hill, there is the Museum of Oriental Art Edoardo Chiossone, the masterpiece of the architect Labò. And now, finally, the wonderful, lavishly decorated ballroom which houses the stupendous fresco of the vault by the Calvi family. This is a depiction of the battle between Constantine and Maxentius, the so-called Battle of the Milvian Bridge, which reaffirms the triumph of the Christian faith. Another as astonishing element is the crystal and altare glass chandelier, which stands out wonderfully. It was created by the workers of the little village close to Savona. The walls are embellished by the beautiful 16th century tapestries known as Doria tapestries, representing on this side September with the grape harvest and Bacchus, and on the other side October with the work in the fields and Jupiter. Then the wonderful wooden gilded statues realized in 1730 by Anton Maria Maragliano representing the truth, a naked girl holding a mirror, and the glory with a laurel wreath in her hand. This room is particularly important because on the 13th September 1892 it houses a grand ball with prominent guests which gathered here including the Italian royal family who greeted the festive crowds from the balcony.